Penny for your thoughts. I hate Brenda, and a bad guy hit me in the shin, and I peed all in my pants. <laughs> Nothing a little music can't help. Rockin', rockin' and rollin'. Down to the beach I'm strollin'. But the seagulls poke in my head. Not fun. I said seagulls. Yeah. 
All right. Look, that works so much better than last week. Right off the Whoa. bat. That's a killer intro. That's a killer know. intro. It, it's it's pretty badass. I'm I'm, I'm just gonna say I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, yeah, I oh, dig yeah. it. Oh, By yeah. the way, you might hear my dog bark. I don't know what's going on. As soon as I came down here, I think there's a squirrel or a raccoon or a rabbit in the backyard or something, and she's absolutely going crazy. So you might you might hear my uh my dog going uh from time to time here. Uh, welcome everybody. This is the Spawn Review episode two. We're going to be looking at issue three fifty one. So I hope everybody got a chance to read that issue. We're going to dive into it. I know we've got some big spawn people in the chat, big spawn people here on the on the uh, show. We have uh, <clears throat> the Gooch with us, everyone. Jay, Yo. if you guys don't know, Jay Doyle over here. Tell us a little bit about yourself before we jump into this. Oh, um my first time <laughs> on here uh, uh yo what's up everyone uh how's everyone going uh you know uh i'm excited to be here i'm really jacked to be doing spawn i was just at the spawn con yeah you in were october and it was a blast it was with uh, mark mark bolton and mm -hmm. uh, all the guys there had a blast so my uh, brag got to meet him. So you now you <laughs> now no. you no it was awesome uh <laughs> uh no we got to meet a lot of cool people uh got the couple uh, you know drawings i uh, got a couple t-shirts uh, i've been a spawn fan i huge fan of the hbo series that was like phenomenal i love that series it was like todd mcfarland yeah king um i've been Thanks. a huge fan of spawn it's to me it's like there's batman and spawn they're like neck and neck they just so dark and gritty and that music dude just captures the moment like big time so um yeah i me i just have my own little channel this little wee channel called diabolical Star well, presents i'm just trying to you know little insignificant little channel. Channel. nobody knows trying about to, it all to, yeah just trying to grow it uh where i do uh you know interviews but kind of pulling back i'm doing a lot more uh animated uh reviews having a blast having a lot of people on there joining me they're all awesome uh, the people my gooch army you guys rock that's been <laughs> gooch a great army. time great gooch gooch army <laughs> I didn't even create it. That's the thing. I didn't even create I, it. It's been a blast. I love so. how I love how when the gooch started, you know, is this this big old just joke? It started as a joke on your show, and now now it's this big old this phenomenon. You know, the gooch army. Oh, I wouldn't go that, that far. I wouldn't no, it's a pun. It is. It's, it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. this is, it all started it like it started from the, like yeah, simple little joke, and it just blew up into this to this thing. So well, shit, yeah, you gotta call yourself the gooch. You don't even call yourself mm -hmm. Jay anymore. Now it's just no the like, gooch. Like that's that's all I got you on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody get a uh, chance go check out jay's channel uh i see a lot of mods in the chat if you guys get a chance can you please grab uh diabolical souls studio wait is the studios now or just souls it's I'm diabolical just... souls presents presents it's more like just diabolical souls the gooch brigade right. yeah yeah if one um, of our mods could grab that throw that in the chat there for people go sub to uh to jay's channel it's blowing up uh lots of very awesome anime reviews over there good good guest jay's always been really good at interviews i'll tell you what you guys do yourself a favor check it out if you haven't already i do want to say it quickly and i don't want to waste your time but um it wasn't for these two guys up here these guys have been a huge influence uh have been lots of support i remember joe he was our first guest so um when he came on my my old show uh, he was like nothing but support and gave advice whenever I needed it. So big ups to you guys. And Sean oh, yeah, has been a huge brother to me. Me and him have been talking tons over the last year. Uh, a lot of tears, mostly Sean. But I mean, it's it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell us well, more about us. That's, that's what we're primarily here for. Us. <laughs> no, it's a pleasure to have you on with us. And like uh, the yeah. time scales is saying, you exploded recently up to yeah. 6K. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that channel is just growing 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 so everybody go check him out give him a sub follow him on there and then uh if you're new to this channel sub to this channel too you know or i will send you naked pictures of myself or something we'll figure whoa, it whoa, out whoa, whoa. carbon dioxide you seen have you seen the videos in scavengers range joe bennett the creator is my brother in law super talented brother if you could if you could swing it that we could have him on i would like dm me bro dm there me. you go please dm me so uh, I'd love to talk to you about that because yeah, we're that, doing that right now. That happened here <laughs> first, guys, just so you know. Breaking news. Yeah. There you go. Connections. I love it. It's out of the chat real quick before we get rolling. You guys are coming in here. Appreciate it. Uh, Hail the Lord was number one, but that was uh, the other day when I posted it. So it doesn't show up in here anymore. But I shout you out. Thank you, brother. Got here on the steadfast member of the channel in the house is hail the chat. Hail to you. What's up? Mark Penguin. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, great show, gentlemen. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you very much. We got Duck Bacon in the house. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Check out his art, as always, on Instagram and X all over the place. Very fun stuff he puts out. Carbon dioxide in the house is spawn. That's all you need to know. Elon Mud, what's going on? Like mm -hmm. it, subscribe. Yes, please do. If you guys haven't yet before, if you're watching this live, you're watching this uh, post, I guess you could, you could say, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We have uh, a skunk snot in the house. Nice. How is it? Spawn, let's go. I like that. Hail to you. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. Time Scales, as we said before, is in the house as well. Member of the channel, Cosmic Studios, is here. Dropping emojis. Love it. We do have the new spawn emoji, by the way. For members oh, really? Of nice. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, spawn symbol. We'll get more as we go. But drop cool. that in there if you are a member of the channel. I want to see it. Uh, going down here, we got Sammy 3 Pete. I like that. Hail. Ooh. Sammy. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Uh, who else we got here? Did I miss anybody? Oh, here we go. MSK is in the house. MSK. Ah. What's, What's up, going on, brother? Good. We still got to get you back on. There's been some people that, you know, when I took my time off of my, my father passing, I had to cancel the show on a few people. We'll, 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 we're still working on getting you guys back on the show. Uh, so keep an eye out for that, but definitely will. Charles Rivas is in the house. Yeah. Hey, brother. Let's see. Dennis Kelly, one of our favorite colorists is here. Hail to you. Uh, the Gooch Brigade. Oh, Ooh. that's an interesting one. I kind of like that. Yeah. The Gooch Army, Gooch Brigade. I think it was GD. originally the Gooch Brigade, to be honest. Oh, was it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, Wyatt's in the house. Hail, brother. He says, are your Twitter video crashed? But hey, everyone. Hey, to you. I checked it, and it seems like oh. it's going. It seems like it's going still, so that's weird. But, it, you know, we're experiment experimenting with going to X, as they say. See if that helps at all. I don't know. We'll see if it does or not. Uh, I think that's it. I think we got everybody. Oh, Zach's here. Zach. what's up zach nice. i'm morning for this let's go <laughs> as we all are a quick uh, shout out roll... yeah go oh, for sorry it. joe i, no, I was no. just gonna say a quick, a quick shout out to, to zach he comes on to uh the animated uh reviews and he does a drawing from the beginning of the show to the end he pencils and inks it uh, that's another added yeah another added feature we have on our shows and it's a lot of fun we're going to be auctioning those things off at the end of each series so people nice. if you like one of those pictures he and he's killing it he's really killing it so uh awesome and sammy's uh, part of the crew too as well so hashtag CTG. uh hail the core 20 core 20 is in the house shout out to you guys appreciate you we have three watching over on rumble shout out to the guys on rumble uh, i think 30 over 31 over on x right now so nice. how's everybody doing tonight we are going to be diving into issue 351 so this was the kind of thing we wanted to kind of follow the new story uh new storyline starting with issue 350 which by the way is where i'm kind of jumping back in from a long time of not really being a part of the main spawn series yeah as you got that right there i've got mine somewhere here somewhere and i'm as a lover of mostly art and then you know i, I will confess i don't read a lot of stories because i get bored i like to look at the pretty pictures that's what happens but as a lover of art, I'm absolutely loving the story right now. And it, obviously, Brett Booth's art is, you know, the thing that brought me in. So we're ready to roll. We're going to dive into this. Uh, guys, before we go, what did you think of 350? 351, I'm sorry. Go, Gooch. Uh, well, 350 was uh, effing amazing. It was uh, 350. Oh, it was amazing. And then 351, it just, oh. It doesn't get much better when you like you got Brett Booth drawing Spawn. It just At it, Brett motherfucking Booth put some respect Brett on that name. Yeah, motherfucking, Brett motherfucking Booth. Booth. Yeah, put um, the respect on that name. Let's go. Oh hell yeah! It's just it's phenomenal. I love it. I love everything about it. It's just like uh just brings it brings the story even more to life. It's just like uh this is what I want. So I'm digging everything that he's doing with it. Um. He's he's top five easy, easy top five. Oh, and yeah, down. shout out to Todd for keeping it affordable. Like that, I, that's why I paused book. it. Yep, that's yeah. why I paused you it. Know? Like still two ninety nine. Let's go, you know. Let's well, like go. Four to five, and like that that gets fucking crazy. No, hundred yeah. percent. We got Kayla in the house, co-host mm. of Akba, which will be on at ten fifteen. This is the Monday comic book block, starting with Spawn review. We're gonna roll right into uh, appreciating comic book art live next. Uh, but we are looking at issue 351. Going to talk about it a little bit. Uh, hmm. Sean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God, I did that. <laughs> Fallout. 
One thing I got to say that I absolutely loved, we were talking about Brett Booth, this uh, variant cover. Oh, Booth's yes. variant cover inked by the Todd father himself is just 100% badass. Oh, that is just sick as hell. I love it. Mm -hmm. And that's really good that. team, really good embellishment on Todd's mm -hmm. part. Yeah, you know, Todd inking anybody, I think, is fantastic. He's a hell of an inker. You know, yeah. he's probably a better inker than he is artist, and that's saying a lot because he was always a very dynamic artist. Yeah, yeah, he's very toony and very out of this world with his with his storytelling. But his finishes are like none others. Like I don't know, maybe just under Terry Austin. Oh damn! Now that is a mm. yeah, that's a, a huge huge props mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. in the same category as that. All right, so <clears throat> basically we're jumping into this story a few months, I think. After yeah, about two months before two months. Elements happened. Oh, as far as like the beginning of this is a prequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I mean, yeah, well, Sean, why don't you jump in and then this, so this video we're going to follow, we're not going to show every single page like we do on Aqua. Aqua, we have a lot of older comics. So I don't know what it's, the whole copyright strike stuff is, so I'm trying to be a little bit safer with this show. So we look at quite a bit of this book here, but not every single issue. So we're going to kind of go through this slowly and kind of go through the story as we go. But uh, Sean and then Jay, jump in when you want. Where are we at right now with uh, this character, Blood? All right, Blood's been around for a long time. He's a very interesting character, kind of played different sides here and there throughout Spawn's uh, history. Cool vampire character. Uh, <laughs> we kind of opened up in the probably one of the greatest scenes ever. It's right. By, by <laughs> yeah, Daphne straight Chicks. up boss pimp, you know, scene. Yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we're catching up with him, what's going on, and... As we fast forward through the pages, he's going through his plan or whatever his, his world at the time is going on. That that lighting, that lighting from the door that goes mm -hmm. right across the, the bed there, mm -hmm. where you see the, sh the, the the shading of like, the, especially on the the black girl and the and the other girls, and even blood. Like it just it's beautifully done. It's just Ramos is doing a hell of a job. Oh. I like the it's... smearing he's doing. I'm like it's mm -hmm. if you can. I don't know if you can look closer, but he, the way he's he, he's not blending it, but like he's smearing it, so it's somewhat quasi painted. It's yeah, um, yeah, it's an interesting technique. I'll say that. If you guys want more analysis on art and colors and stuff like that, definitely check out Appreciating Comical Art Live, where we go more in depth on the actual art, um, which. <laughs> we probably will have a tendency to do on this show because that's just what we do. Uh, so sorry about that, but we this is funny because this is a show. This is a show that Kayla would probably rather be on because she gets to talk about story, and she's yeah. like, "Damn it!" The the time you actually talk about story, she's not on the show, but she is welcome anytime that when she actually has the time to jump on the show. So basically, we see uh, blood is getting getting news about everything that's going on. The dead zones are expanding. Heaven and hell are losing their powers. Uh, it's basically time for the vampires to, uh, you know, take over. Mm. The dead will rise. The dead will rise. And that's Purgatory where, like, Spawn arrives into this little bar called Purgatory. And where, you, yeah, you, between heaven you, and hell, obviously. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, go ahead. I mean, to cut you off. I was saying, you want to talk about an entrance. So this is the first time we've seen Spawn mm -hmm. since, obviously, 350 mm -hmm. when he had his powers. But, you know, he loses his powers after Nyx takes the throne. Um, and we see him in kind of a version of his old, old costume. Now, because yeah. he is the hell spawn, he still has the symbiote and everything is still bonded to him, but he's powerless. So now you've got this kind of really more grounded street level version of spawn, maybe more Batman in style, you know, with, you know, being able to be injured, all that kind of stuff. The, the costume is much more now, uh, fabric, you know what I'm saying? Actual, like, instead of this or organic life, like costume it's, it's a little bit more just like boom shredded you know the cape is way way uh shorter got pouches what all right pouches. shout out to the pouches everybody shout out to the pouches hashtag what? pouches hell yeah how much more 90s oh, yeah. can you get yeah. you know yeah i love Pinch me pouches I like, the, pouches. I like the cloak on top it's like um Clint yeah. Westwood, like as um, a cowboy uh the name escapes my my the name escapes my head right now but just reminds me of like a Clint Eastwood type of aesthetic. Yeah, it's definitely well, it's, like a Western feel. Yeah, but it's even it, you could even go uh, more modern with the new um, Dune Two 
with they have that similar kind of style with the cloak. I haven't um, seen it yet. I'll check that out. Yeah, they have the similar kind of cloak style. So it's just, it's hitting like, not only are you getting that classic vibe, but you're getting the more modern vibe because it's kind of been brought back in the movies. So it's like, he's hitting all the marks. Like, look at the wall. Like, everything everything that he does there is just freaking fantastic. I'm looking for our name. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to tell him that one day. I'm going to be like, dude, can you sneak our name? Yeah. You know, just put it in there somewhere. That'd, yeah. that'd be awesome. Um, I'll throw you a 20 spot. How about that? So yeah. this is where Spawn's looking for Caliban because he wants to know what the hell's going on and with blood and Caliban is the in-between man, I'm assuming. And what I love about this is the last time we saw Spawn, he was with She Spawn. You know, there was a lot of confusion. Everybody that was involved in issue 350 doesn't have their powers anymore. And now you're picking up. He's solo by himself. We don't know where everybody else is. And it's it's a cool mystery that's being built, right? We I mm-hmm. I feel like there's been a little bit of a a movement of time, not very much, you know. But we're kind of jumping into now a, a brand new story, and we're kind of discovering what's going on with this mystery. Uh, why is Nick's been quiet? Why hasn't mm-hmm. she done anything on the throne? And it's just been this way for for a second now. So he's trying to find some information. Goes to purgatory, and that's a, it's a pretty cool pretty cool conversation. If you guys haven't read this go out and read it because the dialogue in this i'm actually really i'm really liking the dialogue between the characters do you guys uh assign voices or actors to whoever's reading when you're reading comics like this guy that he's talking to i i I kind of put uh julia roberts uh brother into it Uh, eric roberts yeah yeah interesting that's a good call i actually had it but you know now you mention it yeah i can definitely see that like and like with Spawn, it's always uh, Keith. I see that David, see that. right? Yeah. And then um, with like the the fonts that are telling you what's going on, it's always Todd. You know. Oh right, yeah. You know, it's like oh. <laughs> Even if it's not Todd you, writing, you know, it's like <laughs> well, his with voice, you the know? narration like, of his voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. With this scene here, when he sits down with Caliban here, mm-hmm. do you guys get the reference with Han Solo Greedo kind of vibe? From Ooh, this? Oh, yeah. I didn't until now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I kind of missed it until now, but now you mentioned yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, love- it's, 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 it just brings out all these classics, this book. It's just like, it's mm-hmm. so refreshing. It's probably why I enjoy it so much. I'm, I, I probably am enjoying it so much. I'm not really kind of, like pulling out some of the references and stuff, but it's, it's giving it to me. So I'm it's sucking me in. Like that's, this <laughs> yeah. is what I love as far as writing goes and everything. Like, I love this conversation. I love it. spawns walking in here used to being like the badass, right? Like this powerful fucking being. Uh, and he's basically sitting down with this dude. That's not that powerful. Didn't used to be as powerful as him, but now is in regards to all this more powerful than him. And he's basically saying like, you're looking for something, you know, why should I give it to you anymore? You know, basically, yeah. what what are you? You know, you used to be a ten. Now you're a one. Reference to chicks, there. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Definitely don't take kindly to that. <laughs> right, Joe and Shaw into the book. Uh, they get killed by Spawn within the first five minutes. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I would take it. I was already an eventual comic book. You've been in a couple comics. Yeah, Sean's been in a couple comics. Yeah, keep yeah. an eye out for it. Uh, SF Gaming says, I love the new direction of the books. Me too. And yeah, I'm a huge Spawn fan, but I've been very vocal with the fact that I haven't always liked the direction of the story or the art that they brought into you know certain eras of the comic. Yeah, yeah. I'm a huge fan of issue one through 100. I have a you know a lot of love in my heart for those. And then after that, it's kind of hit or miss for me. So this is the first time, and it started with Gunslinger. That was obviously because of Brett Booth. Again, art is going to bring me to the story, but I really enjoyed Gunslinger. And now switching over to the regular, uh, the main series of Spawn, I'm just, I'm digging this story. I'm digging the writer. Who's the writer? I don't know. I didn't even look at who the writer is, but I'm, I'm liking his stuff. The writer is um, Rory McConville. Okay. Has he his been like the guy? Has he been writing Spawn for a little while now? Not that I, I know don't of. Think so. It's from three, I think three fifty one. Okay, so the the whole new the whole team came out mm-hmm. over over uh, yeah. from Gunslinger. Okay, that's probably why I dig it so much because I really like the writing on Gunslinger. Um, this is just such a badass. I mean, come on, seeing Spawn with a sword, depowered. Okay, he's still badass because he's Al Simmons. He's got all this training, you know, 
over the year. You know, so he's not just like a normal a normal guy who loses his power. He's like, oh, I don't know what to do. No, 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 no. He knows what the fuck to do. <laughs> he knows what to do. And now he's got this badass look. I mean, you're you're adding in like this kind of samurai element to this with that katana there. Just awesome, just visuals. Love and even the vampires, them. they're they're not your basic like Morbius in a trench coat. Vampire. Yeah, yeah. They got style, they got charis they're, they're charismatic there. Each individual, where normally it would be either a black coat or a white coat or whatever. It's always the right. same guy with different hair. But here Bert's giving them uh distinctive qualities. Uh Sammy Three P says, I haven't touched a spawn comic in years. Well, definitely that. check this out. If you like what we're talking about here, if you go back to the first episode we did last week where we talked about issue 350. This is a good jumping on point, I think. Um, and I think it's fun. I mean, the art gives a, a throwback to like the 90s feel. I mean, Brett Booth, obviously, but you know, like a modernized 90s kind of feel. And uh, I like the pacing of the story. You know, it mm -hmm. keeps you engaged. The dialogue is yeah. really good between the characters. And I don't want to go into too much of it because I don't really want to spoil for people. My, you know, I want people to go out and read the book. Um, but I just when you enjoy something, I just I, I want to talk about it because there's not a lot of comics in the mainstream that i really get up for anymore that really just get me excited to want to go back to my lcs every every month but this is definitely one of them and it's for the first time in a long time the spawn has got me this excited well a quick question for both of you yeah. guys like reading 350 mm -hmm. did you uh, did you expect that twist i did not no I, I, well like, uh, sean nailed it Go ahead, Sean. Yeah. Go up for a second. Go ahead. Okay. No, see, I can't do it when you tell me to. <laughs> no, like um, I, I've been reading. I look been reading small for a very long time. I'm invested in the story. I love the character. I love good or bad. I'm just there. Um, I had my picks of who would take the the throne. I didn't think it would be Spawn. I would, I thought it was gonna be Nyx or maybe Wanda. That's what I thought. Okay. When yeah, when they introduced Wanda, but like it just yeah. kind of made, made sense the way they were treating Nix in, in, in the story. Like they were they, they were showcasing her more than most other characters in, in certain elements. Oh my gosh, she's she's a fucking shooting. And then when Joe was gonna spoil for me, but he didn't I know he was gonna that, yeah. spoil for me. I thought he already he read, the book. I read the red. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. But then I read it like a day later, I was like, oh shit. And then I texted him, like, I think it's going to be this person. He's like, oh. But then when I texted him who it was, he's like, yeah, you're right. I'm like, oh, it's rare. I have not read the main title for a while um, and just kind of loosely going through Gunslinger. Because like I said, I'm more a fan of the art than I am of story. That's just the way I am. Um, I was kind of going into a blind, right? And that's what I think I enjoyed about it is, is mm -hmm. someone that hadn't really followed the issues up to 350 i was going in reading 350 just getting caught up trying to figure out who everybody was so the mystery of who was going to take the throne was uh, probably a little bit more special to me because i absolutely had no idea i thought it would have been cool if uh the clown took it personally just being an old rival Ooh. of spawn i thought him taking over would have been like this just the, the worst thing ever right yeah. and i thought that would have been awesome for the storytelling going forward with the rivalry <laughs> Uh, with Nick's taking it and you know, kind of getting into the storyline of it and where they're going now, where everybody is depowered, I love it. You know, because it's we've had three ish, 350 issues now of Spawn just gaining, 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 gaining powers. Yeah, he lost his powers, went back to hell, you know, got put back on earth. You know, he's bounced back and forth, but he's just kind of always gained uh power and gained stature. Now he's back to basically nothing. You know, and now how is you, how do you deal with that in, in this world where you're used to now for however long? being being the man you know mm -hmm. now how do you deal with that going back to street level and relying on your instincts relying on your training in this world where now you were facing vampires you know it, so it, i really dig it it's a story i did not expect them to go that direction and i think that's why it's got me so captivated right now with the story itself see i i didn't think the clown was going to take it because they spawn and clown have been doing this cat mouse thing for forever like decade yeah, yeah. decades yeah and I was like, are they going to, is he actually going to, you know, kill him off? Because if the clown takes it, eventually someone has to kill him to take over the throne, right? Right. Um, so, like, I'm like, that would that would kind of, I don't know, ruin the Spawn storyline. I think uh, keeping clown in, in the picture, he's kind of like the Joker. He's kind of like always, you know, in that 
in the in the story, even though he's not even in the story. So right, I mean, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and I I thought Sin uh, that's a possibility, but when Wanda, I was like, oh shit, like is this the way of Spawn and Wanda staying united? And that, but then I was like, but then she's gonna lose. She's she's gonna be lost like it's gonna overtake her so much so badly so quickly yeah that would have been that would have been interesting yeah I think her taking over like i feel like with her character if she t- had taken over there would have been a massive shift because mm-hmm. of how she would have handled everything and i don't know if that would have been as compelling going forward unless you're talking about how she keep a hold of it with you know a revolt i don't know you know so it would have been interesting but like i feel like it would have gone in the wrong direction you know, putting a character like that, you know, like, I don't know if you want to call it pure, but like her soul, you know, like she's, she's a good character putting her on the throne. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody wants their ex fucking ruling hell. <laughs> like, well, that, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that too, you know. <laughs> well, I, sometimes I think my ex runs hell. So. <laughs> You're in mine both. <laughs> yeah. But in a uh, King Spawn, her and Al had a discussion. Yeah. I believe it was King Spawn. Anyways, that yeah. she's like, look, I love you. But I'm not in love with you. Like whatever we had in the past is in the past. Like so. Yeah, that was like, king. Yeah. Al guarding her was just Al being out for her. She's just like, right. Like, I'm done. You know, like this is it. Uh, Dennis Kelly said that would have been insane if, if Clown took over. That's see, that's what I thought. And again, just because of the long-standing rivalry, I'm glad they actually went in a different direction. Kind of like Jay was saying that we've had that kind of interaction now for you know a long time, what thirty years. Yeah. Uh, so something new i get it i dig it this is great but i do think that there could have been some cool um storytelling elements there uh fsg was asking are we going to go through the new salmon twitch book it's very good i liked it uh yeah we aren't going to cover it as of yet but i'm sure it's going to come up because um i know we want to kind of talk about uh sean just got rat city Mm -hmm. you can read that and uh let me know how it's how it is, and I, I might go out and check it out as well. Uh, we do want to dive into some of the older issues as well, because there's such a, a history now with Spawn, right? Yeah. So we want to. I mean, again, especially since my love of the first 100 issues is so great that I would like to go back into the one, first 100 issues and kind of cover the story arcs from one to 100. You know, and uh, I got the compendiums. The first two mm-hmm. compendiums, all 100 issues right next to me. Uh, we also want to look at Gunslinger at some point, you know, yep. uh, to cover that. So there's a lot of things that we're going to do on this channel as we go. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover in Spawn, so it's probably going to be a slow go. But if you guys have any suggestions, uh, feel free to hit us up, and we'll definitely try to look at things as as we go. Uh, I really want to sell you on the Medina shit, because, like, I know you slept on that, mm-hmm. but, like, that's some, like, the stories are cool. We'll, but the, yeah, we'll get into that too. Yeah, fun, huh? Well, the Sean, woman was created below. The soul. Was Sean, got, below. Yeah. Sean got me like really uh, pumped like during the summer. Like we were, we do we were doing a lot of drawing throughout the day and uh, talking in in the back studio, and then uh, he'd be watching the Do- Todd McFarland documentary like daily, <laughs> and it rolled up to me, and I'm watching it too. Yeah. Yeah, a good, I started watching it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um how do you guys feel about how do you guys feel about the Al uh piece winning the contest from wait, AI. Wait, AI, sorry. No worries. Uh oh yeah, yeah. From the 300 every artistic participated in talking about spawn wouldn't it be an important thing to delve into for a second. Um I mean, you guys you people know that are I'm new saying. to the show. I'll just say, if you guys know, you know, but people are new to the show, uh, we're very anti AI around here. I didn't know that an AI piece won until people started posting about it. Cause I was mm-hmm. just like, you know, whatever. There were some awesome pieces and some, some artists, talented artists turned in and I didn't see any of their stuff as any of the actual winners, which I thought was kind of weird, but whatever, I'm not running wild. the contest. Uh, but the AI thing, and I don't think I've heard a clarification if that's going to still stand or not. But I saw that and I was very, I was disappointed. I was disappointed for one because I, I'm anti AI because I think it's, it's lazy. It's not, it's mm-hmm. you're relying on a program to create, regardless if you touch it up and add yourself into it, you are still just assisting a program that's doing the art. And if we're going to start allowing that, you know, there was that Pink Floyd just put out something where the winner of that contest was an AI 
very well done. Don't get me wrong. The the, the fact the, the thing about the AI that I'm saying is it's not the fact that I don't think it's good. It can be good. And I think it's going to be continue to be great, but it's not real. It's mm-hmm. not human. It has no soul behind it. You know, that's the thing that bothers me the most about it. I want to collect art. I want to look at things that were created by a human being because you can look at this. All right, take these pages for instance, right? Brett Booth drew these pages. It was inked. It was colored. And all human touches, right? And that comes from a human mind, the human imagination, storytelling when it comes to comics. You storytelling with your colors. You can storytell with your inks. You storytell with your art, obviously with the dialogue. AI is just a, it's an artificial you know, aspect of that. It's no, it's no soul. I, I don't support it. I don't like it. I think it's a lazy way for people to try to get into the limelight. And if people start giving it attention, like they did making it a, a winner for a cover for something like this or a music video for Pink Floyd. I think that really hurts. It hurts everybody that's trying to push back on it. And I don't think it's a good thing. I don't like it. It doesn't make me happy. Um, that being said, you know, like I'm not upset at Todd over it. You know, I don't even know if he knew or not. Who knows who is actually judging everything? But I would like to see it fixed. So if you guys have any information, if it actually got fixed or not, hit us up and let us know. But that's kind of how I feel. What do you guys think? Um. Go ahead, Sean. <laughs> nah, I think it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, sure sweet. Hey, Corey. Well, yeah. that's like that's like for me, it, it'd be like going to the art gallery and all you see is AI art. Right. So what's the point? Like, because exactly, like you said, there's no soul to it, and there's no, it's lifeless. It's it's a click of a button, you know, and it prints out an image for you. Uh, you want the bl- you want the blood, the sweat, the tears put into uh any piece of art it doesn't matter if it's black and white color whatever it is you know abstract you know you you name it people have their vision of putting something on a canvas on paper on a wall whatever we should appreciate that and we should be honoring that more and and the other piece that you that you kind of briefly touched on is it's taking away jobs we're already seeing this well, in like too. McDonald's. Yeah. You're seeing this in McDonald's where you you order you can just order on the machine. Subway, same thing. You just go up to the press machine. You're taking hey, away jobs from teeth. I but look, taking... these fuckers want 15 bucks an hour to flip <laughs> burgers, and then they fuck up my order. I will touch the keypad. Yeah, but you <laughs> know what, Sean? But there's a lot of young people out there that that don't have the education that that rely on those jobs. And if we start, if they if they don't have those jobs, then you're going to see more crime. You're going to see more people desperate. I think you need to have something that people can actually, you know, work hard and and actually, you know, say that I did this. I worked hard to get to the being a manager at McDonald's, coming from the streets, the ghetto, or you know, not having an education and working their <sighs> way up and being. Bad. <laughs> well, it, it, it makes them feel good that they actually did something for themselves. They busted the hump to get there. It, yeah, people might mm-hmm. may look down on that, but honestly, I'm not looking down on it. I'm just saying. No, no, no. You know, I'm not saying you. I'm just saying people. Yeah, order. Order. But people so may look down on that. That's why I'm anti AI, anti all that stuff because it's mm-hmm. you're taking away. It's bad enough we're not we're not talking like having these conversations more and more with like face to face. Yeah. everyone's just staying at home like it like it's it is becoming like wally the movie it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so- not a good it's not a good thing it's not leading to a good good place and i don't care like how good it is right because it's again it's going to get better it's going to get better it's going to look awesome and it's going to pull in the mm-hmm. normies that see something and that's a bad thing and it's a lot of the ai artists and i don't want this to turn into this and we'll jump back into the comic here in a second yeah but a lot of the AI artists seem to be very excited to try to put people out of work because they're lazy and they can now achieve stuff that people have spent a lifetime, you know, uh, training and learning how to do. That pisses me off for one. You know, I, I think that's a shitty thing. But <clears throat> if if that happens, none of this is going to be as fun. I'm just telling you guys right now, you can look at something that's going to look pretty and maybe some people are going to get tricked by it. But when you take the the soul out of creating it's an expression art form whether it's music tv comics writing is the expression of the soul through the person you know it's a connection that we get we are all connected when we read when we watch when we listen to things you're connected to the people that created it so now you're going to be what correct connected to a program there's no connection there there's no you know relating there so i mean it's just i don't like it 
I'll push back on it. I think everybody should push back on it. I don't think Todd's talked about it. If he does, hopefully he comes out and corrects it, but it is what it is. Um, all right, let's jump back into this issue here. So here in Purgatory, Spawn is trying to get answers for the cure for vampirism. Now, I don't know if I missed it, and you guys can you know tell me if I did, but have they established why he's looking for that? Why that's the question he's he's trying to figure out? They don't I don't know because I don't know if, remember if it's King Spawn, but like he's he's looking for uh Wanda's grandmother and he's got vampires that he's fucking with, but Silent is gonna mm-hmm. interweave somehow, but not here. Like th- this might just be like a jumping on point for people to be like, Oh, okay, cool. Like here's a new story, here's a new plot, blah 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 blah. Go down here for a couple of issues and move on. Well, I, I think it it's it alluded to uh the point where like uh, like spawn has lured these vampires out from purgatory to this um this dock docking shipping uh yard and it kind of alludes to that to me that they have no powers but blood still has all his powers and he's he's the one that's always caused a rift be- with the spawn the clown and um and sin and like he's kind of played the game amongst all of them so i think like and and i could be totally off in this i think spawn is kind of thinking ahead thinking uh, like the long game of i need to take out this enemy before he joins another enemy and then i'm in bigger trouble okay so Mm -hmm. that's my mindset but see uh, i was thinking and i was wondering um if since they don't actually come out and say that he's looking for for a specific reason i'm wondering if they're whatever time has elapsed from issue 350 to 351 even a short period of time i'm wondering if there's somebody that he cares about that has been affected by the vampires mm-hmm. well there's right? that too yeah and, but, but i just think... my thought right off the bat again i'm i'm catching up to the world as we go which is why i like doing these shows with you know you guys have followed the comics longer than i have because i took a long long break so i'm trying to see how some of these characters fit in i'm trying to guess maybe where they're going and you know just roll along with the mystery of this issue so that that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, where where's she spawn? Where 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 are all his allies that that they just had in, in the issue before? Mm-hmm. And why is he looking for a uh, cure for the vamp or for vampirism? 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 Yes. They are in the pages of Scorched. Okay, see now I, I need to read more Scorched. That's mm-hmm. what it is. I'm not a big fan of Scorched. I, I'm not, I, I just. I yeah, can't I say that's a problem. Like, I'm not like I'm I'm really not a huge fan of King Spawn either, which I, I need to start getting into a little bit more now that he, now that now that he's established a universe, you know, it's hard to just stick with Gunslinger, which is what I was doing. And again, primarily because I wasn't a huge fan of the art on some of the other books. Mm-hmm. But diving, you know, now that I'm getting kind of more excited about the story, I need to get a little bit more into what's going on with some of the other titles. So I'm I don't think we're gonna dive into every single title that's <laughs> that Todd puts out on this channel. You know, but we definitely want to cover the new the new storyline and then also kind of go back and just celebrate the history of Spawn as it's been over the last 30 years. That boom sound effect is lackluster. Boom. Boom. That's a good point. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you the, other, the, a other, boom. <laughs> the other thing is like Spawn is always like 10 steps ahead of everyone else. Yeah. So so that's why I'm like I'm 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 trying to think 10 steps ahead when I'm reading Spawn. Like what is Al Simmons actually planning? Right. He, he, he's always, it's like Toronaga from Shogun, right? Tor, Toronaga is always like planning 12 steps ahead and people are just like, fuck, like, what is he thinking? So like with Al Simmons, that's why I was thinking like, he's going to eliminate this army, get the, um, how to eliminate vampirism and do two things at once. So mm. cause he doesn't, mm. he doesn't have his power. So he wants to eliminate this army before it becomes a bigger issue from later down the line where they join up with maybe clown or what or whoever i can see that well especially because i mean they're the only ones right now that have any kind of dominance with Mm -hmm. you know the dead zones expanding and so many uh characters without their you know angels and demons or heaven and hell whatever you want to call it characters without their powers Uh, as far as i know the vampires still have their powers right that didn't affect the vampires at all so they're still doing their thing Mm -hmm. um yeah, actually, I didn't think about that in relation to you know what who might join forces as they go. Well, even the beginning with um, uh, what's his name Taliban. Taliban. 
Mm-hmm. Or Caliban? Caliban. Caliban. Sorry. Not Taliban. <laughs> Caliban. <laughs> the, tal- the Taliban. <laughs> the Taliban. Yeah, sure. the Taliban are in this book, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Caliban, where he's playing he's playing the fence, right? He's like, well, I don't think so. You've you kind of pushed me around for all these for these decades. Yeah. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with um uh who do you say he's gonna join forces with um uh blood. He's yeah, gonna, gonna, blood. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna go with blood. Yeah, he's gonna join the stronger, the stronger side, right? So I think Spawn is trying to hit in all the marks, eliminating it. Kind of almost like a Batman kind of vibe to this story, to be honest. Good call, yeah. man. I was kind of thinking that too. You know, I mean, it, this is kind of Todd's Batman anyway, in a sense. <laughs> you know, yeah. it always has been, even with the the superpowers and heaven and hell aspect. And now I think for the first time you actually really have a detective story. You know, because there's a there's a mystery here. He's trying to figure out something. We don't quite know exactly what's going on because we still don't know what the hell Nix is doing, what her overall plan is. She's been silent mm-hmm. apparently since the last issue. You know, so that, I've noticed like the past few years, like since he's done Spawn Universe, like every story kind of crosses over one bit, like here or there, subplot. Yeah. But then sometimes they're not in there, and you're like, "What's going on? What happened?" Mm. But <laughs> yeah. so this might be with finding Wanda's grandma because I know there, there, there's vampires in there that he's fucking up, but or it's just something else that we just haven't known. See, so, that's what I'm wondering. I'm one. Wonder, I think, I think that they're building up to something that we haven't expected or we don't know about yet. You know, mm-hmm. to me, if you are starting this new direction, you know that we're going now with Spawn, I think it continually story-wise story beat wise continually to add something new as we go forward is what we are all looking for you know because we could have done the same thing like jay said we could have done the clown you know Mm -hmm. we could have done one of those characters on the throne gone into similar story and just kept going back and forth we're going into some new territory so i really think and i really hope that they're leading into something brand new that we're going to see unraveled as we go that's why i hope that there's something more to the to the reason why he's looking for the cure for vampirism and well, that kind of go ahead. Sorry, before I jump. no, no, I did, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, I, go I was ahead. just gonna, I was just gonna go back to uh, Nix. <laughs> well, Nix, like, here's my thought too with her. Why do anything? They have no powers. They're gonna naturally go up against each other. Let their let her enemies fight each other off. And right. kill each yeah. Other. Yeah. Like, why, Ooh. why, why stick your neck in there when you don't need to? Especially now that everybody's got. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's yeah. vulnerable. You know, a, a level playing field. So now you're seeing who's worthy right so there's that thought yeah because for the first time now angels and demons can be killed at least that's what they're they're mm-hmm. portraying we see earlier in this issue, issue we didn't really cover it but if you guys go and read it there's a group of angels that all get massacred by the vampires you know unless mm-hmm. they they're what is it they're something with their wings are going on like they're decaying or something you know because they don't have their powers or anything they're in pain and uh they get wasted absolutely just torn apart the very cool awesome. scene awesome. um so i mean yeah it's a level playing field you know i'm pretty much it's like uh the strong survive at this point and then the vampires are just doing their thing because they're still you know fucking vampires but the end of the book rolls around and it leads to this really awesome cliffhanger and this is what i love about comic book storytelling in the short form when you're doing a monthly series when you're doing 20 pages or whatever right. the 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 cliffhanger is to keep you excited for the next next issue coming out next month. Uh, we get Spawn fighting these guys in the middle of trying to interrogate these guys, and this new character comes in, seemingly has power because she, you know, comes in with a bang, knocking everybody down. Don't know who she is. Do we have any idea who this might be, or do you think it's a completely brand new character we've never seen before? You never know with Todd. You 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 really do never know. Like. I mean, and if Angela hadn't been sold, I say if Angela hadn't been sold to uh, Marvel, yeah, that I would have been all about being like, oh, you know, maybe, you know. I'm digging the the spikes that she has, like in her ponytail and her shoulders. Yeah. Like, she's got like, she's got this Shredder, uh, Moon Knight, like vibe with uh, mm-hmm. what's her name, yeah. Angeline, Angel, uh, um, Angela, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, no, that's who it is. Yeah, Angeline. Angeline, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring, bring the character back. Yeah, just name it a little bit different. Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know who it is, but I'm absolutely digging it. And just this character oh. again, character design. I'm gonna lean to that 
Brett designed it. I just have a feeling that it wasn't, you know, you're not working from a character that was designed by somebody else. I think Brett had a lot to do with this. Um, it just adds the intrigue. You know, I just love this intra- entrance, entrance, entrance mm-hmm. of a character. Uh, and just, I'm, I'm ready to go. Let's go. I dig it. Bring back the red hat. Let's did go. you also notice on the next page it says zero zero? Oh, yeah. yeah, I was going to bring that up. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of doing the we're counting up instead of uh, doing the uh, countdown. I think as we did before, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So that makes me believe that you know, is he slowly gaining his power back by certain things? I don't know. You know, it, the way that Todd always used that counter in the early series was you know to show that countdown to where he was going to be sent back to hell, which eventually happened in issue fifty. I think we saw, or was it 100? No, it's oh, 50. Uh, you went there. I was thinking there's a new day. It's a new day, a new, a new um, queen like on Celine the throne. Dion? <laughs> a new what? Oh, a, a new <laughs> a new queen on the throne. Like it's the first mm-hmm. book with the new oh uh, the new Lord of Hell, right? So this that is a be. whole new. Well, it was in Gunslinger too. In the recent issue of Gunslinger. They- it's the same thing. Hmm. Okay, so it's going throughout the uh, so oh, that's far. Interesting. Just those two books. Okay, I didn't okay see that's interesting. Issue I haven't, I haven't read the newest one yet. I got. I yeah, got I don't think I picked up the newest one. Like again, Brett's off the book, <laughs> so it's harder for me to jump back on and continue because you know you, you got to pull me in with the art. That's just the way it has to be. That's why the '90s is so great to me because the art was always so good that you always brought me into any right. book that a badass artist was on. You know. Shout out to YSA uh, checking us over on X. Thank you guys. Appreciate you. Oh, uh, Joe, Joe. For, yes. Look for page 16. That's the one Brett was drawn while he was on with us. Remember? Oh, shit. I'm glad you brought that up. This one here. We thought it was 350. We're wrong. Then Sheldon proved us wrong. So. Yeah, no, I'm going to find it. Uh, Sean, tell was, the story for people that don't know. So, so we, we had Brett on uh, probably either top of the year or end of last year. She shit in the, oh, it was probably the end of the year. So we were just talking about Spawn, him coming on Spawn. It was just announced and our excitement and us just geeking over him. Like, and when you drew that, that was cool. And he's <laughs> like, well, you know, I'm working on the page now. And we're like, oh, you should draw us. No, uh, but he, he it, was, it was a storytelling el- element that he had had to do last because he had got in subplot news or some sort of news just to tie things in uh, from a different book and make everything accountable. So that's why I thought it was 350. But Sheldon's like, no, it was 351. And I was like, boo this man. So but yeah. <laughs> 351, page 16 is the page on the left here. So no Brett, shit. Yeah, yeah, that's badass, right? Look what was inspired. I know, we did that. Right, <laughs> we, we're gonna take credit for inspiring that page for Brett because he was drawing it while he was on our show. Nice. No, but that's badass right there. So, yeah. little, way to go, little, guys! Good team, good team, good team. <laughs> a little bit of Ott and Stuff history, which Ott and Stuff is a show we do on Thursdays at, at 10. So, check that out. It's a little bit more, you know, guest and topic oriented, but all right, so and Ott and Stuff, Ott, yeah, Ott and Stuff, yes, Ott and Stuff. I love that picture. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, I think I after we got to the end of the book, I put it back here just to look at it. Because this was my favorite. I mean, just they they put this uh, they put this out for promotional. They put the pencils out, they put the inks out, and then they eventually dropped the colors right before the issue came out, which I think is a really cool way to promote your book as it's coming out. Drop you it off. See the pencils? Yeah, bring it up. Yeah, let's check that out before we get out of here. No, I'm just I, I'm really loving this show. Our show. I'm really loving this. Uh <laughs> I hope so. I'm I'm, I'm I'm on the X Men '97 thing, so I've, I've been talking so much about episode, and I do that too. I, I'll talk about X Men '97. I'll be like, I love this issue, and I'm like, Fuck, episode. Anyway, I'm I'm loving this 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 series so far. I love the characters. I love the art. Mm-hmm. Again, like we said, it's just it's fun storytelling, good cliffhangers. It's making me really intrigued for what's going on, and just badass art. You know, it's comic books. You know, it's it, awesome. I don't know how much more I can say. It's just it's comic books, man. You need this style of art, you know. Thank God for Brett Booth. Uh, Still doing Sean, that was a good call with the Eric Roberts because that's all I see now. That now, yeah, yeah, right. Oh man, that was a good call. I totally see it. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, 
can we quickly just talk about episode five how lit that was like on the x-men 97 like how about let's do that uh let's do that in aqua yeah. we'll okay. talk about a little bit on aqua because this oh, show man. this show is almost over we gotta have a, a hard end to this so we can get to uh appreciate comic book art live at, at uh joe episode. i had to text you the pages because my browser is open for stream yards and i can't well okay now yeah, I, I gotta think upload it. So I was just gonna say more work for me, Sean. Look, uh, that's the that's that's the the agreement we had from Jump Street. My, my that's friend. that's true. <laughs> you that do the work, true. I just sit here and talk shit. <laughs> All right. But if we even look at the the, the Eric Roberts uh forearms, look at the gestures, mm. just the nonchalance, oh, yeah. the hands, the acting, the cigar that's... smoke. That's it even him. looks like him. It looks like him now. I like you said it. Now it looks like I. All I see is him. So. Okay. Yeah. Next time we talk to Brett, we're gonna have to remember that Sean, and you're gonna have to ask him that question specifically, and just see if uh we'll stump him a little bit. Be like, were you thinking of uh Eric Roberts when you drew this? <laughs> He's gonna be like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> He's gonna be like, no, I wasn't at all. <laughs> Everything you guys spew is just bullshit. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> That that image of Spawn there is like giving me such a Dark Knight vibe. Like it's oh, yeah. it's just uh, it's, yeah, it's a heroic you know kind yeah. of pose, right? That's yeah. one thing I love about Brett's art, which is everything. But uh, he knows how to pose the characters in certain scenes, you know. Uh, okay, so here's the original pencils. Oh, of this, and I think it's always important, you know, if we switch to our art. Uh, minds here for a second and educate people for a little bit if you're just normies or whatnot um it's really awesome to see the original pencils and first of all brett's got so much energy and dynamics in his art uh this pose is amazing you get the sense that he's walking down the stairs in the most badass way possible mm -hmm. as he's entering into uh this bar the purgatory bar uh and just seeing the original pencils just raw like this i mean just wow absolutely fantastic See the and weight in it, and, and the leg just kind of kneeling, you know, just just the movement of it all. He doesn't suck. No, no, <laughs> like he's he's hands down one of the best right now. Oh, mm -hmm. for sure. And then, um, who who inked this issue? Because it was a uh, oh, uh, it wasn't El Adel, so it was Daniel it wasn't, Daniel Henriquez. Yeah, 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 it was Henriquez. Okay, I thought it was yeah. okay. Good. Um, they make a great pair too. I, I'm I've really come to enjoy Enriquez stuff as of late that he's kind of been doing but yeah just nails this here with the the inks just bringing it together i would love to own this oh i would love to own this piece right here you, and you know he he fits adelso isms if he you does. don't know what that means check out adelso corona one of the greatest mm -hmm. guys and one of the best illustrator finishers inkers there is oh absolutely uh, even talking to a guy like Cell Cell Regla, who was talking mm -hmm. about being inspired by Adelso's inks over Brett, you know, because yeah. the cool thing what Adelso does, getting into some art nerdum guys, just you know, uh, the cool thing Adelso does over Brett's work is he keeps the energy. Like Norm Ratman, who inked Brett for a long time at DC, did a fantastic job of making yeah. a smooth, you know, polishing, mm -hmm. just awesome, right? But a guy like Adelso, a guy like Cell Regla, you know, Enriquez. They they keep that energy of of Brett's pencil lines, you know, because pencil mm -hmm. Brett can be very tight, but also sketchy, mm -hmm. you know. And if you if you finish it too much, it almost gets a little bit too much of a pop. It's almost like uh, too much HD, right? When you're watching a movie and you got right. the, you got the resolution turned up way too much, where you're just like, it looks great, but there's something missing. It looks you know? like a soap opera. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, with this with this inking style, like nothing's missing. It, it looks absolutely gorgeous. So. Uh, check that out, guys. Before we get out of here, uh, by the way, thank you for joining us tonight. I just want to say real quick, we do have a couple books. If you like Spawn, if you're following Spawn, you dig that story, you like the dark heroes of the 90s, so to speak, then uh, you're going to love Reaper Destroyer, which is my book, uh, which is being lettered right now by the great Eric Weathers. Talk to him today. I should get a preview of the first uh, go around of the lettered pages here in the next couple of days. So I'm pretty excited about that. Nice. 
But this is, uh, if you love Spawn, you're going to love this. It's, it, it's a completely different story than Spawn. It's not a ripoff of Spawn. It's not Heaven versus Hell. But there's a lot of elements when it comes into, you know, the, the supernatural, fantasy, sci-fi, thriller aspects of stuff with just some amazing, amazing talent on this book. I'm not going to go into too much of the pitch. That's not what we're here for. But I just want to tell you guys about it. Uh, Reaper Destroyer, links down below if you want to check it out. Also, Sean's got a book. Badass. Type one, the only one. If you like books of the 90s, this book is up your alley. Now, while it is bright and bubbly and shiny, the villains of the book, the Nine Lords of the Night from the Mind Aztec lore, have a little certain uh, familiarity if you're a Spawn fan. Uh, I think you'll 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 like the different almost demon esqueness to it. The uh, the darkness of the gods. Yeah. So if you like that stuff, this is up your alley. T don't be a bum. Take a shot. Back to Thank Let's you, everyone. Go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's all the shilling for tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, this has been fun. I, I, I'm enjoying diving into this. We're going to get into more things. We want to cover the animated series. We want to cover the movie. We're going to talk about the toys. We're going to jump into the first 100. The movie? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, we're covering it, man. Uh, the, yeah. there, there is a... Is, 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 is that movie didn't age well, right? But there is a funness to it. And the fact that it was the first image book to hit the, the, the screen, it was one of the first big comic book movies to hit the screen in the 90s. You know, when you're not talking about Batmans and all this kind of stuff, you know, as an independent, you know, character rising all the way up and, and getting to the theater. It's a fun, it's a fun movie. We're not going to go in depth or anything, but I'd like to have an episode where we talk about it. Yeah, it's going to happen. We're going to cover all things Spawn here. That's what we do. By the way, we got a poll in the chat. That says, did you enjoy Spawn 351? 77% said yes. 23 said no. What is going Fuck on? Them. What? <laughs> Don't run people off, Sean. What? Come on. Pull it back. Pull it back. But I would like to know why. Yeah. yeah I'm going to end I the poll there, it. though. Appreciate you guys. If you haven't yet, please book. go. It's it's amazing, in my opinion. Go check it out. Mm -hmm. Go buy it. Go it's okay it. to have bad taste. Jump in here every Monday. We're going to talk about the new issues probably a few weeks after they come out so we can do a little bit more in depth uh, without getting struck or whatever, you know. Uh, but we're going to dive into some other stuff uh, starting next week. We're going to be looking at some uh, some fun things. I'm not going to tell you now. Tune in to find out. Jay, promote yourself a second before we get out of here. Um, well, I got this weird little channel <laughs> called Diabolical Souls. Sweet cool. little come channel. Check it out. To come check it out. Uh, do a lot of fun stuff there. I got a lot planned coming up in the future. I'm uh, scripted out a book. Sean knows clearly knows a lot about it. Uh, he's been kicking my ass to get going on it. Uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a digital uh, 22, 23 pager. See how it goes. Uh, the story is the story is awesome. I, I do have to say, I, I really think it's gonna be something fresh. And I'm gonna be working on a 2D animation for the channel as well. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm gonna have some. Yeah, I'm gonna do some three minute, three to four minute uh, episodes. I'm gonna be working on that. Uh, I'm gonna fool around with it, see where I can go with it. So uh, I'm gonna be putting that in the near future. Uh, it's not. I hope to have it something out by the end of 2024, but you know, life does happen. So who knows? So uh, I'm just happy to be with my brothers again. It's been a blast. These guys are the best. The best comic book show on yeah. YouTube, bar none. Like it's just. The best i i really uh i can't uh, i appreciate you guys a ton you guys know that so we appreciate awesome. you well, yeah, we like you Greg. yeah you know we don't uh i actually yeah. don't have an outro for this show so we're just gonna run the intro you know we're cheap like that uh stick around <laughs> oh you know what before we get out of here let me drop the link to appreciating comic book art live which is happening in about 15 minutes i'm gonna drop that in the chat um because i don't know how to do the raids let's just you know i do apologize I'm not a boomer. I just don't. I don't understand it. I am. So I'll, I'll show you best. how to do raids. I'll show you. How to oh, do you raids. know now? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I've, I've been doing raids for a while. Oh, well, shit. No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See? See? Yeah. Some might brag. <laughs> yeah. Some might brag, but no, not you. You know, no, not me. <laughs> I, I remember you. Sweet little guy. Now you're this big multimedia right. co uh, host. You're like the Casey Kasem of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody link is in the chat we will see you in a few minutes as always be good to each other take care of one another picture me naked talk to y'all later peace what the hell are you spawn Yeah.